Good. Well, well, thanks, John. It's great to be here this evening. Um, maybe I'll get started by noting that my wife, Kim, and I have three children and 11 grandchildren. Uh, my wife's a teacher by profession, uh, taught for a number of years uh, before joining our businesses. And so I, I think like all of us leadership hopefuls, uh, a solid, sound education system, uh, an education system of excellence is, is critically important to me. And um, I believe school choice is a big part of that equation. In fact, I believe our, our school system, our education system is much stronger because we have uh, significant school choice available to, to uh, our students and, and to their families. You know, you, you raise a very good issue around the weighted moving average formula, the new funding model. And um, I, I will say at the outset that we have certainly brought some fiscal discipline to our education uh, program uh, over the last three years. We've not reduced education funding, but we held it flat for the first three years uh, in our budget process. This last budget year, we increased it by 1.7%. So, you know, a material increase. But over the years, we held it flat and we were able to deliver well because of the new funding model. Now, I agree, this weighted moving average model uh, does not work well for rapidly growing schools. And so I would suggest there would need to be a, a grant to offset um, you know, the, the cost pressures for rapidly um, growing enrollments. And again, that's gonna be some specific schools, you know, it's certainly some independent schools would fit into that category. And the formula I think will require tweaking as we work to get it right. So it works well, so it's well calibrated, providing that predictability but also ensuring that growing schools have adequate funding. You know, one thing we did last year, we included funding for independent schools, um, grant funding to support those schools uh, for uh, ad additional supports for children with disabilities, uh, additional supports uh, for learning loss. And we, we historically, independent schools wouldn't have been included in those types of grants Last year, we included that grant funding for all schools. I think that's very important because, you know, parents who send their kids to an independent school also need additional support. I would absolutely continue that trend to ensure that we have a level playing field on, on specialized program and programming and supports uh, for families, perhaps with kids with learning disabilities. Now, the other thing that I would do right now, and Danielle was right to raise it, we have a funding system that doesn't treat all types of school choice equally. One thing, independent schools have received no transportation funding. Today I rolled out an announcement that if I have the, the privilege of serving Albertans as premier, I would include transportation funding support to independent schools or to families that send their children to independent schools. I would calibrate that on a consistent basis with the instructional funding at 70%. And there would be some details to work out, but we, knew, we do need to work to level the playing field so that parents have legitimate school choice. You know, if you can't afford to get your kids to school, that's not really school choice. We also in budget 2022 included some additional capital funding for charter schools. I think that's critically important. And, uh, and again, in budget 2022, we also included specific funding for homeschoolers, again, for support for parents with children with, with learning disabilities. And I would want to continue that and, and likely increase it. So again, regardless of which school choice a parent chooses for their children, they're adequately supported. 